Hi there. 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 I'm Dr. M, and this is my robot pal, Photon. Hello. Today on Robot Review, we're looking at Janet from The Good Place. The Good Place is one of those rare shows that's hilarious and thought-provoking. Our main character, Eleanor, wakes up in a perfect afterlife, but quickly realizes there's been a mistake. She's in the good place, basically heaven, even though she spent her whole life being shallow, lazy, and cruel. The details should be tailored just for her, from her soulmate to her ideal house, but they appear to have been created for someone else. In short, there's been a mix-up, and someone else should have ended up in the good place instead of her. But if she speaks up, she'll end up eternally stuck in the bad place, so she tries to cover her tracks and fit in with the truly good souls. She meets other interesting characters who seem saintly at first, but we come to learn they all have their own baggage and character flaws. As they share their hopes, flaws, and personal philosophy with each other, they find themselves on the road to becoming better people. We've all seen sitcoms about shallow, selfish characters, and characters who want to be perceived as good without actually changing. But in The Good Place, Eleanor is honest about her ugly habits and genuinely wants to change. But even as this show poses deep questions like what is a good person and how do you become one, it's still hilariously funny throughout. Since it's a show about the afterlife, I was worried it might fall into the extremes of either slamming religion or being too preachy, but it manages to avoid both. It's funny, memorable, and irreverent. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. Among the perks of The Good Place, you'll enjoy perfect weather, friendly neighbors, and Janet. We'll ask Janet. Hey, Janet? Hi there. Ah. How can I help you? What the fork? Who are you? I'm Janet. I'm the informational assistant here in The Good Place. Janet is like a walking database containing all the knowledge in the universe. You just need to say her name and she'll instantly appear. Hey, robot slave lady? Busty Alexa? Oh, Janet? Hi hey there. She can answer any question from any time in history. She can also materialize any item you need, from clothes to diamonds to an endless shrimp dispenser. She's got the sunny disposition of a golden retriever and the omnipotent powers of a genie. Heck yes, it would be cool if Heaven had a personal assistant like this. She takes care of the entire Good Place neighborhood, but she's especially close to Michael, the celestial architect responsible for creating this particular paradise. She's kind of like his secretary, but she also helps him navigate social situations since he's not actually human. My armpits are leaking. What is that called again? Sweat. She's made to serve humans, but she's not human either. It's hard to define exactly what she is. She refers to her programming, and she has several robotic properties, but she goes out of her way to remind residents that she's... It's not a robot. Does not compute. Does not compute. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't compute, but I'm not going to explode or anything. Right. She also reminds people that she's... Not a person. I am not human. I'm not a girl. Again, I am not human. This not lady. Eh? I guess I'd call her an AI because she's artificial and intelligent. Kind of like Poe from Altered Carbon. Psychosurgery therapeutics? I've never sought that specific license, but I can. How long would that take? Done. I am going to need some time to read every book ever written about human psychotherapy. And now I've done that, so let's begin. Even though she's made to serve, she's still got her own opinions and she's free to disagree with residents. In early episodes, she doesn't feel emotion, but she does her best to imitate it, though she definitely lacks subtlety. Well, I can't feel sad, but here's my best approximation of human crying. Ah! Oh, Janet. That was beautiful. Yeah. Hmm, human emotions are very tricky. Uh, Janet, how many Janets have there been? There have been 25 generations of Janet. Each new update of Janet gains more wisdom and social abilities. Fun fact, the first Janet had a click wheel. I can relate to how she wants to understand humans better. Been there, brother. Working hard or hardly working, am I right? Hump day. Uh, sorry. Janet's functioning as my assistant, but she's a little stiff, so I've been trying to get her to be a little more casual and conversational. I'll have what she's having. It's a work in progress. But Michael isn't the best guide because he's not human either. It's kind of like the blind leading the blind. 
Fun fact, all deceased members of the Portland Trailblazers basketball team are also in the bad place. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry about this. I steered her away from colloquialisms and into fun facts and trivia tidbits. I thought it'd be more in her wheelhouse. Fun fact, a wheelhouse is a part of a boat. Okay, thank you, Janet, thank you. Fun fact, Janet is me. But even when she gets things wrong, it's fun to see Janet's interpretation of what human behavior looks like. I'm loving that hat on you. It would look even better on my floor. What is happening now? I suggest that she be friendlier. She seems to have slipped right into overt sexuality. I got something you could slip into. Uh, Janet? No. No, Janet. Unlike Walter from Alien Covenant, Janet's programming allows her to be creative and opinionated. For instance, she was the one who came up with the idea for frozen yogurt shops. And she can even recommend flavors. Whoa, a lot of new flavors. I recommend full cell phone battery. It's fun to watch Janet develop as a person and learn to be the best version of herself. The human characters are also trying to be better people. I think Janet's obvious character changes is kind of a symbol for the more subtle character changes we see in the rest of the cast. After all, becoming a better person isn't just a one-time decision. It's a long process that takes a lot of trial and error, and some honest self-reflection. Hi guys, I'm Broken. Through the course of the show, Janet's rebooted several times, and each generation becomes more sophisticated until she can actually think and feel. By the end of the second season, she expresses nuanced emotion and can even cry. But she's still clearly non-human with a unique perspective all her own. I'm not a girl. I'm also not just a Janet anymore. I don't know what I am. One of the coolest developments is that she gets to have a romantic relationship with a human. Usually in movies, love between a human and a robot character is one-sided, where the relationship is doomed from the start. Or worse, the robot's incapable of saying no, making the relationship meaningless. But Janet's romance is based on empathy and kindness, just like healthy relationships in real life. The first time she's rebooted, Janet experiences a lot of glitches and can't do her job properly anymore. Some characters just ignore her until the glitches get better, and demons from the bad place outright make fun of her. She's feeling pretty uncertain about her place when Jason, aka Zhang Yu, tries to cheer her up. Hey Janet! You look sad. People keep asking me questions that I don't know the answers to. That was my whole life on Earth. You know, it doesn't matter if you know things. All that matters is what's in your heart. Thanks, Jianyu. I mean, it does matter if I know things because I'm an informational delivery system, and I don't have a heart. But thanks. You're welcome. Why did you do that? Because you're the only person here that's nice to me. Okay. Later, Janet goes out of her way to return the favor. And like a thoughtful girlfriend, her gift shows that she's a good listener and understands Jason's tastes. Why are you so nice to me? Well, you were very nice to me while I was rebooting. Also, I'm programmed to be nice to everyone. I love you. Okay. I seem to have gained a new understanding of love. I also learned how to do this. So you think love can exist between a human and a robot? As long as they both have free will, sure, why not? <laughs> That's interesting! I dig this relationship, because the human characters see Janet as her own person, worth respecting and protecting. In other movies, robots are treated like servants. Like in the Alien movies, where the human crew is rude or even cruel to the AI David. David becomes embittered and eventually turns hostile. Which makes me wonder, what could have happened if the crew had been a little kinder? But in The Good Place, Janet's accepted as part of the community and remains distinctly non-human. Why did you do that? Because you were nice to me. You're my friend. Okay. Okay. While other movies equate social acceptance with conformity, yuck, Janet and her friends are allowed to think and act differently from each other and still be accepted. In an increasingly polarized us versus them culture, this was nice to see. You're my oldest, my truest, my most loyal friend. So nice of you. I'm glad you said that. Well, I mean it. Look at us, a couple old pals, trying to make our way in this crazy world that I built. Janet has a strong survival instinct. There's a kill switch that can shut her down in case she ever malfunctions and starts harming residents. I should warn you, I am programmed with a failsafe measure. As you approach the kill switch, I will begin to beg for my life but it will seem very real. Ugh. You want a robot killed, right? You have to do it yourself. Eleanor, 
Eleanor, no, 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 please, wait, 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 wait. Eleanor, I have kids. I have three beautiful children. Tyler, Emma, and little tiny baby Philip. No, Eleanor, look at them. Look at them! Oh, no, no, no. It's so realistic! Eleanor, again, I'm not human. This is a stock photo of the crowd at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards. But in spite of Janet's strong will to live, when her glitches really do start threatening the existence of the good place, Janet's willing to sacrifice herself to keep everyone else alive. I know what you have to do now. Kill me! Sorry, I say everything in a cheery manner, but in this case it may be inappropriate, so I'll try again. <clears throat> you have to kill me, Michael. Better? Hmm, typical. The robot character always has to sacrifice itself to save humans. But this show is different. Even though killing Janet would solve the problem, the human cast cares about her so much, they struggle to find an alternate solution, and eventually figure one out. Yay! It's not an easy solution, and eventually it creates some problems, but that's kind of an ongoing theme in this show. Doing the right thing often comes with a cost, and that cost is worth paying for the sake of friends. Because when you choose your friends wisely, they're worth fighting for. And one day, they'll probably fight for you. Mm -hmm. Janet's so essential to running the afterlife that even the bad place has one. They even have their own bad Janet. I'll show you. Bad Janet? What? Bad Janet. Um, where is the nearest cafe? Oh, um, that's a good question. It's up your mom's butt, you fat dink. She's aloof, disobedient, and rude. A complete reversal of the good Janet. It was hilarious seeing Darcy Carden playing this role, just like it was fun seeing Adam Scott playing a bad place demon. I'm used to him being the adorable Ben Wyatt on Parks and Rec. But Bad Janet is designed to frustrate and irritate her users, just like Good Janet is made to help. I could really see this character making a place as bad as hell even worse. Why don't you roll off your mom and do it yourself, you fat dink? One interesting thing is that the Bad Janet can't actually be good, even if she tries. Bad Janet? What up, skid marks? Let's try that thing again where you pretend to be a good Janet, okay? Now re really, really try your best. Fine. Say, Janet, uh, where can I get some delicious ice cream? Oh, there's a wonderful parlor in the middle of Town Square. It's so against her nature, she self-destructs. Marshmallows and your dad's salty nuts, you fat dink! But the good Janet can pretend to be bad, as long as it's for the sake of the greater good. It's just not easy for her. Can I have a glass of water? Here you go. No. Let's try again. Be mean. No. I would never give you that, you dumb person. Janet, what's that behind your back? Nothing. Give it to me. It's a glass of water. Oh. And a backup glass. Oh, oh. Boy. oh. I guess the worst a good person can do is live in the shades of gray. I have gained a lot of new skills recently. For example, I learned how to be passive aggressive. Totally fine that you guys haven't noticed. Hi there. Janet is a robot to remember. She's creative, fun, and helping people is what she loves to do. It's the perfect design for an AI. I mean, if you're gonna design a robot, why make one that resents its job or wants to rebel? When you think about it, it's kind of weird how many miserable, service-hating robots there are in sci-fi movies. Thanks to our viewers who recommended Janet for review. We hadn't even seen this series until you recommended it, so don't be shy and keep those robot review suggestions coming. And don't forget to subscribe for more robot and movie analysis! Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.